Hey guys, uh, in today's video I'm just going to kind of go over my experience from going to a 6 core Xeon uh, processor upgrading to the new, or not really new anymore I guess, but Ryzen uh, 2700. Um, this is, at the time of recording, this is one week roughly before the Ryzen 3000 series launches. Uh, if I'm lucky, uh, I, know, I know ASUS is going to update their boards with a BIOS update for the 3000 series, but I'm not sure if my board in particular will accept a 12 or 16 core Ryzen. Not that I need the upgrade per se now, but maybe in the future if I wanted to do that, or if I wanted to put this motherboard in my server and put a 16 core in it, it'd definitely get more use there um, on the high core count kind of situation. <clears throat> So this was, sad to see it go, but this was my my baby for a while there, Asus Rampage 3 Formula. I bought this board used um, as not working. Um, I was able to get it working pretty well. Um, I had an issue with channel A on the memory not working, but I think that turned out to be the CPU that was in there. Um, cause I ended up later getting a, <clears throat> another X5670 Xeon, um, and that kind of solved that issue, but then I still had issues when I tried to populate all of the RAM, I had, it wouldn't always detect it, and it was kind of weird, um, so I ended up with 16 gigabytes and somewhat of a, you know, three channel setup, but it is a supported, um, use case to have uh, the RAM like that. I've got this little fan here because the IOH here gets very very hot so I was trying to help keep it cool especially because I had a water cooling setup instead of a big air cooled heat sink here that would blow air a little bit around the socket. I didn't have that so it is finally in retirement and it served me well for many many years and I had it overclocked to about 4 gigahertz um, it was very rock stable didn't have any issues with that um, and it got me through for a long time like getting the PC to this state has taken many many years and years and years buying parts here and there buying parts used saving money whenever I can uh, the new motherboard is the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero and uh, it's a $200 board right now, but I paid $100 for a refurbished one. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. I did have to buy an IO shield separately on eBay. It cost me $10, I think, and waited for it to come in and, and installed it. So anywhere I can save a little bit of money, I'm going to, trust me. The main thing that really helped, you know, you know, just, just in usability of the computer, was upgrading from a 128 gig SSD um, to a one terabyte NVMe storage um, SSD. That that is such a huge difference. I'll show the benchmarks on the on screen. It is such a huge, huge difference. Um, part of that is that the the old X58 chipset it did not really have a very good implementation of SATA 3 um, and even then even if it was better it's still an upgrade to go to NV NVMe so it was a huge jump in storage speeds um, and and also in storage capacity so I'm able to load more games onto the SSD and load from there instead of using I had two of these and I would use one as kind of like a scratch drive when I'm editing or I think I had maybe one or two games installed on it um, the ones that really took a long time to load but I was really surprised going from six cores to eight cores how much of a difference it made because that doesn't sound like a big difference but you've got to realize that's eight or nine years worth of uh, of processors getting better and better IPC improvements things like that so it's not just cut and dry how many cores is it how many gigahertz is it, it there's a lot more to the formula than that. Um, I mean, for example, Cinebench with the Xeon, I was getting about 941 score, multi multi core score, and now I'm getting about just under 1500. 1471 is one of the runs I have here, 
and that's a good difference. So, you, you know, it's 150% of the performance I was getting out of the Xeon. Um, it was a good deal for a while there, the Xeon chip that's in there now, I paid $25 for or something. It was incredibly cheap. Um, and it got me by when I really didn't have as much money to invest in, in my PC. And looking at the benchmarks, I mean, it is such a huge difference. Um, and even in the graphics score is so much better. Um, I'm running a 1070 Ti graphics card and um, it just helped a lot to have a, a more modern CPU um, handling the CPU side of things. Um, also, in, uh, I use Sony Vegas to edit my videos and my render times were almost cut directly in half. I mean, it was a huge difference. I had uh, two videos that I had cut. One was a um, a gaming video that I had cut together, and then another was uh, filming a friend's wedding. And um, so I, you know, rendered it out on the old setup and saw how long it took. And then um, once I got everything set up on the new PC, tried it out, and it was literally a month, about half the time. So that that's been a great great help <laughs> that's always a pain you, you know you make little changes you get your color correction right and then you're like well let me render it out and see how it looks and you know you gotta wait 30 minutes or something it's just kind of a kind of a downer <laughs> um, if I ever upgrade my uh, server a little more maybe to like a 16 core horizon or something then I will probably delegate rendering to the server and let just copy everything over the network and then let it render it out if it can do it faster than what I've got in here. Because really eight cores, I don't see updating this PC for anything that I do between editing and, and gaming and whatever else. Um, this is kind of the sweet spot. I mean you don't really need much more than that for what I do. Um, you know, I'm not running dual 2080 NVIDIA card TIs and you know just, just trying to set world records or something. I'm, <laughs> Uh, I just want a good gaming, or let's say great, a great gaming experience, and that's what I'm getting. I don't really need much more than that. Those last few FPS can cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars more. I'm not worried about it. This does fine for me. <clears throat> um, I also upgraded recently, just in the last couple of weeks, I upgraded the fans to... Um, uh, Corsair fans. i um, trying to remember the exact model number. I think they're LL120s maybe. Um, so I've got the controller, I've got five fans total. Um, and of course it does all of the RGB puke kind of just crazy colors everywhere but I did I don't typically go for that. Um, right now it's really just it slowly shifts between a light blue <clears throat> and a dark blue and just goes back and forth there so it gives it a little bit of vibrance and life to it without just going crazy with lights flashing everywhere. <laughs> um, actually when I first turned it on after installing the fans I kinda had my head inside the computer and I forgot that there was a start button on the motherboard <clears throat> so I'm shorting out the the pins with a screwdriver to, to get it to boot up and it's just the light that came on I jumped away from the PC like whoa like it was so freaking bright but um <clears throat> I think it looks pretty good now. It's a pretty simple implementation of, of RGB. A um, little bit disappointed I didn't have to break out the soldering iron to really get some custom stuff in there, but it was also kind of nice that it was just so easy. I've got three LED strips that are also synced um, through the Corsair software. Uh, I've got one along the top, one along the left edge, and the one on the left edge you'll notice that I had to put some electrical tape because there's normally holes for the screwdriver to go through to, if you want to take any of your expansion cards out. So I just put some electrical tape there just so it doesn't uh, look funny. It looked really awful for <laughs> before I did that. Um, I tried an LED strip along the bottom, but you get these little like hot spots um, coming off the power supply shroud, and I didn't like I didn't like that at all. I like it to be very smooth. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just um, I don't like the hot spots with the, with the LED, each LED like showing you know being a bright circle all along the bottom. 
<clears throat> and the last LED strip is actually behind the 240 millimeter radiator and it just helps a little bit to get a little more light on that side of the board um, and another reason um, I mean at first I tried to find fans that I could plug in a four pin RGB header to my motherboard and control everything there quickly found out that wasn't really the case I guess it's a little bit outdated now for the four pin but whatever uh, basically what I did I've already got the graphics card with its almost white more bluish Zotac logo I've got a white Cooler Master logo on my pump and neither of those are, are addressable or changeable at all and then the motherboard itself has two areas where it lights up and I just kept them white because I'll just make it match the uh, graphics card and the pump um, I could make it I used to have it actually before I upgraded to these fans where it would slowly go from the light blue to dark blue but I knew I'd never be able to sync it up between the motherboard and the Corsair fan so I just, I'll just just keep it white and I think it looks pretty clean and looks pretty good I'm going to try to get the best shots I can um, not really much of a photographer um, and lighting and all that stuff just kind of really confuses me and how it looks so different on film than it does when you're you know right in front of it but I, I can tell you it looks very good <laughs> um, I also got the Corsair K95 um, Pro I think it is I'll have to look that up exactly if I, if I get that wrong I'll put it on the screen uh, keyboard and it syncs with the fans of course through the IQ software um, so I'm, I'm liking that it's pretty cool um, I also have inside the case here the hard drives tend to get kind of hot uh, under the shroud so I've installed an 80 millimeter um, Noctua fan I'm just trying to keep it quiet so uh, that keeps the the hard drives in a you know a reasonable temperature at all times um, <clears throat> That's basically it, for, I guess, for this video. Um, I plan to do a, a more in-depth video of the whole setup, everything here, because um, there's quite a lot to it and quite a lot of customability, custom, customizability. Um, <laughs> so, I'll, so I'll go into depth with that. that that'll be a separate video. Um, so overall, was it worth it to upgrade from the Xeon? six core Xeon overclocked to four gigahertz to the Ryzen 2700 chip absolutely it's made night and day difference in everything I do um, like I said the, the storage speed was a huge huge factor and then I, I was still just blown away with the difference in uh, gaming and graph and the graphics scores and benchmarks were so much better um, upgrading to Ryzen so I've been very happy with it um, so yeah if you have any questions comments concerns leave them below and uh, we'll see you in the next one